Hey, what's up guys? It's Jim Bob here and I want to give you guys an update on the van because I'm getting rid of the old BF Goodriches that I had. I had Raptor takeoffs. They were 35 by 12 and a half on 17s. And since they were Raptor takeoffs, they were load range C and I was just getting horrible vibrations with these things. I could never get them balanced right. And so I'm excited to announce that I've got some Falcon RTO ones in the 35 by 12 and a half by 17s. They're load range E and they should be able to handle the load of the van a lot better. So because they are bigger, I'm going to have to trim a little bit in the fender wells and I don't have them on yet, but it's very obvious that they're going to rub because they're a true 35. Anyone that's ran BF Goodrich's know that they run very small. These are probably like 33.8s or 34.2s or something so because the falcons run true to size um, i'm going to show you kind of what is going on in the back i was already rubbing under full compression with the 35 inch bf goodriches so uh, i'm going to show you that and show you what i'm going to do to fix it i was rubbing right back here under full compression and that's only going to get worse with the bigger tires so if you watch you know it hits right there and Let's see if you can see in there. There's some rub marks in there. It might be kind of hard to see in the video, but we need to trim this. And if in here, it there's like a dual wall part right here that is the actual tub of the fender. So we can't go way back here. So basically we're just gonna have to trim right where we can up, but I don't want it to look awkward. So I'm gonna try to you know, see, and then I'll cycle the suspension once I get the new tires on and confirm. Okay, if you see here, I've already trimmed this. Um, I took it right off to where that the tub of the firewall starts and made a trim. I basically just used a jigsaw to start inside of here. And then I used an angle grinder to cut up and use the jigsaw to kind of cut in. And so there's this lip on the inside and I think you could hammer that over if you wanted. But I think I'm gonna take the jigsaw and just kind of cut up and clear it that way because it does stick out this way. And I don't wanna fold the outside of the fender by hammering it. So I think cutting it's gonna be the way to do it. I really do wish that I could radius this a little more. So as you can see, there's this inside part and that extends right into that corner and it's double folded over right here. So I can't cut any more and radius that without cutting all this out and I just don't want to tackle that. All right, what's up guys? I'm back in the garage and I'm getting the van ready to head to Oregon. We're gonna be heading up there to see our friends at Leatherman and we're gonna stop by our friend's shop at Fit Garage and a couple other things. But one thing I've been putting off doing because I haven't had a place to do it was put on my solar panels. So I've got two 100 watt panels from Zamp Solar and we're hopefully gonna stop by their shop and bend and see them while we're up there. But I need to get these on the van. I've already kind of started to put them together um, all I've done is just bolt on the mounting brackets and that's it. I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to attach it to the high roof of the van. A lot of people use the stick on adhesive panels, but from everything I've heard, those adhesive panels aren't as effective and aren't as efficient. So Zamp got me set up with these and I'm going to be using this 3M5200 adhesive. I don't think you can get it in California anymore, which of course, but um, I've got a couple tubes of it. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to mount it up there. Basically, I've kind of got the brackets on loosely and I'm going to set them up there, mark where the feet should go. And then I'm going to use this to attach them. And then I'm going to bolt them to the roof. And from everything I've heard from Zamp and other people, this stuff works awesome. They've never had a panel fly off or anything. So um, 
really stoked to get these on because I need solar really bad. Right now I still just have the PLBs running the fridge and everything. So having the fridge up on the, on the roof all the time is gonna be a huge, huge help. Okay, and so what I'm doing here is I'm basically placing the panels up on top of the van with the mounts and I'm just kind of getting them roughed in and figuring out exactly kind of where they're going to go side to side and fore and aft. The next step is going to be loosening the mounts. The feet aren't going to sit exactly flush because the top is not flat, it's kind of curved and I want to allow the mounts to sit flush to the roof and not be bound up to the mount. So the next thing is I got to clean the top and you can't use an alcohol based cleaner because it will not allow the adhesive to cure according to the direction. So I'm using uh, alcohol free based degreaser and then it's really just using the adhesive and mounting the feet and leaving them loose. They are not super tight to the panels like I said before. As the adhesive is curing, you can massage the panels and move them around because it takes quite a while for this stuff to cure. And that's gonna bring me to my next step. I'm actually gonna remove the panels because the weight of them can actually cause the feet to shift. Because like I said, it doesn't cure super quick. So I'm taking the panels off and they are gonna cure on top of the van without the panels for probably 48 to 72 hours and I'm gonna test and see how firm it is. And then from there, if it's good to go, I'll mount the panels and we'll be ready to go to Oregon. Okay, and so I've got another thing that I need to tackle before we drive to Oregon. And that is the fact that I kind of feel like there's too much of the output shafts sticking out of the transmission. And my buddy Justin at U-Joint um, recommended that I get one of these drive shaft spacers and Basically what that's going to do is just kind of space back the drive shaft because of how lifted the van is. I feel like it's kind of pulling out a little far and it's not leaking any fluid or anything, but I would rather there be less sticking out and um, I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about and show you how to install it. All right. So if you look here, um, this is the original witness mark from before we lifted it. And this one, I'm not really sure. It's kind of, I don't know, coming out more than it did originally. So that's why we're going to install that spacer. It's just going to help bring this in. Um, it's not going to go all the way back to here, but it is going to bring it, you know, it's going to insert into the transmission quite a bit more. And again, this isn't really a problem, but um, it's a little concerning. So that's what we're going to do. And I'll show you once I'm done installing it. And basically, this spacer is going to go right between the drive shaft and the output flange of the diff. So it's pretty straightforward, just four bolts and um, we should be good to go.
Yeah, so as you can see, it's pretty much back to stock. This is the original witness mark right here. So it's only about mm, a quarter inch from where it was stock with a five inch lift. So I think this is probably a good mod to do if you've got a weld tech lift. All right, so I'm just out on a test drive and just making sure that this drive shaft spacer hasn't caused any vibrations, uh, anything like that. I don't expect that it has and um, so far so good. So super straightforward, really easy install. And I'm gonna keep driving. I'm putting some more miles on these new tires, which I'm just absolutely in love with so far. All right, so we're good to go. No vibrations, everything's driving normal. These new tires are awesome. I've only put a few hundred miles on them so far, but I mean, there's just no more vibration in the steering wheel and they feel a lot more supportive for this big van. Yeah, I'm gonna be doing a long-term review on the Falcons. Since we're gonna be leaving for Oregon on Saturday, we're gonna be putting a couple thousand miles on them. Lots of highway and lots of off-road camping stuff. So, gonna be doing a kind of review with this trip and keep an eye out for that video. Like I said, we leave Saturday. And if you're enjoying the van content, please consider liking and subscribing. It does make a big difference. So. I'll see you guys in the next one.